same exact thing. We've just done some algebra. And what we've done with that algebra is we've taken an equation that requires us to have all the samples at the start to calculate the mean, and we've converted it into an incremental equation where we're still calculating the mean value, but we can do it after each episode. And each new episode that we add in that gets a value is going to be given the right amount of weight to just compute the mean. So this is the same thing written at the bottom there, but cleaned up a little bit. And this is really important for reinforcement learning. Notice, we're, uh, to calculate our new estimate, we're taking our current estimate plus some step size, which in this case is going to be that small sum that we need to add to calculate the actual mean, times the actual return minus the current estimate. So here we have current estimate, current estimate, and actual return. Notice that what's inside of these parentheses here is the difference between the actual return that we got and what we thought we were going to get before we saw this episode. And you guys may have seen this, uh, and actually let's, let's take this a step forward further. So here we have some step size. This is us calculating the actual mean. But notice that for every value of the state, our value estimates are going to get better and better, and yet with this step size, we're going to be given each new, ep each new episode's information the same amount of weight, which we don't want to do. We want to say that the new episodes, our new values, have more weight, and eventually we want to forget about those old weights because they didn't have that much information involved. So instead of calculating the actual mean, we can calculate a rolling mean by just replacing that one over the number of times we visit, visit state S, with alpha, some value between zero and one. And you may have seen this equation as sub one that's like one minus alpha times V of ST plus alpha times something else. Uh, if you were to multiply this out, again, do some algebra, you'd realize that this is the exact same equation. They both do the same thing, but the notations kind of give you intuition behind what they can mean. So as a, a learning exercise, I'd advise you to do the math and then think about what does this mean? <coughs> Taking some our value and then adding a small amount towards the difference between the equation that you were shown in the class. Yes? Uh, do you need to indicate that alpha has actually bound between 0 and 1? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. So alpha here is a value between 0 and 1, so small set size. And this just tells you the same thing as the last slide. Okay, so that was Monte Carlo learning. And we said that a problem with it is that we had to, is that it didn't utilize all the information that we had. And until we got the incremental version, uh, we also had to have all of the episodes at once. Well, in both of those versions, the incremental and the non incremental, we had to have. <coughs> All of, we had to have a projection, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a, uh, a sample. So at some point it had to end. <coughs> so what if we're in an online world that doesn't have an ending state? It just keeps going. We couldn't use Monte Carlo. Well, all of these problems can be resolved using temporal difference learning. You guys learned it as temporal difference learning that technically includes TV0 and Q learning, Q learning is a temporal difference learning uh, uh, algorithm. But uh, so when I say TV0, I mean the temporal difference learning that you were taught. So with this, we can take advantage of the Markov property. So now we're not wasting information. And all we have to do is take the equation that we just had there for our incremental Monte Carlo method and replace it with this value. So before we had G sub T which was the return that we would expect to get, which is the actual return that we got from some state to the end of the episode. Now we're replacing it with this red text. So my question to you is, what does the red text represent? I'll give you guys a few seconds on this. <laughs> All right, who thinks the red text represents the actual return from the state S? How about the actual return from the state S prime? The expected return from state S? If no, all right, we have a few hands. If the, and the rest of the class doesn't raise their hand for D, I'm going to be very upset. How about D, the expected return from state S prime? 
See, everybody raised their hands because you didn't want to upset me, but it turns out the actual answer is C, the expected return from state S. So what's changed here? Before, we had the actual return from state S. Now, it's the expected return from state S, where instead of using the actual return, we're taking the actual, uh, we're taking the actual uh, reward that we got from state S, and then we're adding some discounted value of our previous estimate. So notice now that we're coming up with a new estimate, V of S, by bootstrapping off of our previous estimate, or I'm sorry, coming up with a new estimate by bootstrapping off of our current estimate of V of S prime. Uh, which is incredible, because we end up actually uh, starting V of S with any arbitrary values that we want, and then we're able to use those guesses to actually come up with a correct answer. So, now, TD0, we are trying to find the values of each state. And we have this layout here. Now, these rewards aren't actually known, but they are the rewards that they're going to get for uh, landing in those states. So, let's say we have one more. And this is Morty's total life. He goes from state 1-1 one, one to state 2-1, and then he dies. But we aren't actually waiting for this whole thing to happen. We're going to learn as Morty 1 goes through the world. So he's going to go from there to there. And we start out with V11, one, one, uh, and this is just plugging these, this number into this equation. And we'll calculate that value as 0. So, this means that Morty, when he moves from state 1-1 one, one to 2-1, two, one, <coughs> the value of state 1-1 one, one is going to now update to 0, which is what it was before. So as he leaves a state, we get more information, and the state that he just left gets updated. So if he were to not die here, and he were to end up back in state 1-1, one, one, he would now have new information about that state, even though his, his run through this world hasn't ended yet. So again, uh, V21 to death, we'll do the same thing, plug the numbers into the equation, get a value, and die. So now uh, 21 gets updated with negative five. Well, fortunately there's a lot of Morty. So we start with Morty 2. And Morty 2 goes through this space. I'm kind of short on time here, so I'm just going to step through these. Uh, from 1-1 one, one to 1-2, one, the value updates to 0, so we should see the state he just left turn to 0 again. From 1-2 two to 2-2, two, two, it's 0 again, so he's going to go up here. And then from 2-2, two, two, he gets teleported out with a value of 5. So Morty gets teleported. And the state that he just left gets updated with the new value. Let's do one more Morty. Uh, note here that this Morty, these Mortys are all following some given policy. We don't know what that policy is, but he, he has a policy that he's following. And this Morty is going to do the same thing as the last one. When this episode ends, you'll notice now that V12 uh, gets updated with a new value of 2.25, and V22 now gets updated even closer to the actual return of 22 with a value of 7.5. So you can see that even though we're now using the information that we get from each next state, it actually takes a few runs through, and we have to see each state multiple times in order for all of these values to get backed up, because so far we still think that 1, 1 has a value of 0. Yes. Should the bottom right corner be 2-1? Uh, this is 1-2. Uh, they're, they're indexed by this. I tried to keep it consistent with uh, what you guys had already seen. I'm not a fan of this indexing. Uh, Alright. So, TD0 allowed us to evaluate each state without having a model of the world. But without a model, we can't use V of S to act in the world. Why is that? Well, if we have V of S, in order to decide which what is the best action to do, we still have to have a model of the world in order to find out where we land, in order to uh, follow the transition <coughs> to the data. Um, so how can we do model-free control? 
And actually, before I do that, I'd like to note that we went from the Monte Carlo method, which used the return from the end of the episode, and TD0, which is just like a single look ahead at our next estimated value. There's something called TD lambda, which averages the two of these out. And in fact, it shows that that converges to the optimal value much better. And so it ends up taking some average between the Monte Carlo method and the TD0 method. By the Monte Carlo method is TD infinity. If we had TD infinity, it would be Monte Carlo. TD0 is a single step. If you get average sums between zero and infinity, you converge faster. Um, but that won't be in your exam. <laughs> All right, so uh, now we want to be able to act in the world. And this should actually be an uh, active model that we learned here. But we're going to need a lot more work. So notice that we now have a new equation, uh, a state action value function as opposed to just a state value function. But Notice that not much has changed here. The only difference is now we're taking the max of our actions here, and uh, we end up with our state action values instead of just our normal values. So using q which of the following are true? Rick can always learn the optimal policy when the Mortys are following a deterministic policy. If Rick buys enough Mortys, he can let them all act randomly and still learn the optimal policy. Or if Rick can let the Mortys improve their own policy by acting freely on the learned Q value. Which of you think number one is true? How about number two? And number three. Alright. The correct is in fact number two, which is that if Rick has an infinite amount of Mortys, he can just let them follow a random policy, and he will still converge to the optimal policy. Um, but this would be expensive, because we're now in a place where we can learn how to act better. But doing this, we're not going to be utilizing that information. Um, in the third one, where it says, well, Rick can let the Mortys improve their own policy by acting greatly on the learned Q values. This is almost true. The only stipulation to it is that instead of letting them act greedily, he would have to only he would have to tell them like the greedy action that they could take most of the time, but some of the time he would still need them to jump off the cliff even if he's already seen Morty's jump off the cliff because maybe the the uh, seeds are only over that cliff so you have to continue exploring. Um, let's look at an example. This one doesn't step through uh, as many things, but we can see in the top left here. Uh, the solid arrow, so we already have a Q function. The solid arrows show the values for our current uh, estimates. And the arrow shows the trajectory of a Morty through the world. In the bottom, we have the reward <coughs> that we'll end up seeing when Morty makes these transitions from one state to another state. We don't know them, but again, we'll see them when Morty takes them. So we're asked to uh, calculate the estimated Q values after Morty now completes this trajectory with an alpha of 0.1, so a small step size, and a gamma value of 0.5, which is our discount factor. Again, this is just plug and chug. I'm sure you guys want to get out of here. So we'll step through. We'll see that when we have 1, 1 up, we get the value of 2.2. So that value gets updated. Again, from state 2, 1, and taking the action right, you plug the numbers in, and that value gets updated, uh, it ends up being the same. And because we only saw these states and actions, those are the only state action values that will end up getting updated. So, if Morty's run uh, with a random policy that act randomly the entire time, that's fine. Otherwise, Mortys could act epsilon greedily on this new policy as long as they can start exploring some of the time. That's it. I know, right?